Pastor Connie's Couch of Creativity. Today we're going to be looking at the story of Jesus in Acts chapter 1 as he ascends into heaven and he leaves his disciples with a message to be his witness everywhere that we go. So follow along today and learn how to be a witness and what a witness is, what we're talking about today. So make sure to get your supplies together so that you can just enjoy the rest of the video. We have our digital downloads, our worship bulletins for three-year-olds and up and seven-year-olds and up. So make sure you download those and make sure, remember there's a, um, a code here for games you could play afterwards, as well as our activity today is going to need um, scissors and a skewer and a straw, pins, and construction paper, as well as a roll of tape. This is what we're making. So any kind of roll of tape. So follow along and I'll show you how to make this in just a little bit. All right, so if you wanna gather your materials and then come on back here to hear our, to worship together, hear a memory verse, and to hear our story, and I'll see you soon. Now we're gonna sing some songs. I have Abigail here, my daughter, who is going to show you some hand motions. This song is called, Lord, I Lift Your Name On High. is called open the eyes of my heart um, and the chorus I want to show you this the chorus goes like this holy 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 so take your two fingers like you're cutting and this is actually the letter H in sign language and then take your other hand like this and you're gonna go like this or like it's hovering over the top of your hand and this actually means holy in sign language so when we say the holy part I want you to take your two hands and um, go holy, 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 I want to see you, holy, holy, just like that, okay, so holy, 
I want to see you. So let us My favorite parts about spring is all the fresh fruit that becomes ripe in my yard. I want to show you my blackberries. Come here, follow me. Oh, aren't they lovely? I might have to get in here and eat a few. Mmm. Mm. So good. Mmm. You have berries at your house? Oh, hey, Mom. Hey, Anna. What are you doing? Ah, oh, picking blackberries. They are so good. The blackberries aren't ripe yet. Yeah, they are. No, they're not. They're usually ripe in like July, right? No, I just had some. They were delicious. So people used to eat them when we were in Shaver in July. Well, I just had them. Did you taste one? Oh man, they tasted so good. You know when they're like 
kind of in between really ripe and a little bit underdone, so they're kind of zippy in your mouth. Oh, it tastes so good. So you saw them and they were like black, like right? Yes, they were black. They were like nice dark blackberries. They are so yummy and they made my tummy feel full and happy. My <laughs> taste buds like sparked. It was the most amazing. You know, you get that zippiness in your, oh, I love blackberries. Like outside, in our yard, right yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, trust me, do you believe me? I, I like tasted, I touched them, I like smelled them. It was great. <laughs> The dog wanted them. They're just so good. He likes them when they're unripe. Well, that is true. <laughs> I am a witness to the fact that there are blue blackberries and blueberries in our yard. You have to go see for yourself because truly, there are blackberries. Well, if they're out there, I want to eat them too, so. <laughs> yeah, you should go. Yeah. <laughs>talking today about being a witness so we are going to do an activity where we are going to make a little um, a little contraption that reminds us that we are to be um, Jesus's witness in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the very ends of the earth so what you need for this activity is a pair of scissors a pen a straw a disposable straw if you have a stick or a dowel. I got these out of my, um, like when we do barbecues, like shish kebabs. Um, but you can always just get a stick from outside if you don't have a, some kind of a, a skewer. You're gonna need a roll of tape. It's better if it doesn't, it could be duct tape, it could be packaging tape, it could be masking tape, it doesn't matter what kind of tape. All that matters is that there's a lot on it so it kind of feels heavy. And then you're gonna need this kind of scotch tape and two or one piece of paper. One piece of paper, I'm doing two because I want two different colors, but you can just have one. And it could just be white paper or it could be colored either way. All right, so get your supplies together. If you wanna push pause and get your supplies together and come back, you can do that. Or watch me first and then you can make your own. Okay, so here's how you do it. The first things first, you're going to take one of your papers and trace your foot pin out. Here we go. Okay, it's your other paper. Trace your other foot. And now we cut out our feet. I'll bet your feet look a lot cuter than my big old feet. Let's cut your feet out. One foot. You have your two feet should look just like that okay now I'm going to take a pen a marker and I'm going to write kind of our big idea for the day is that Jesus tells his disciples that they and you and I will be his witnesses so I'm gonna write I am a 
witness. Witness. I am a witness. Now, I have my two feet, and now I'm going to take my dowel. I'm going to break it about in half. One goes here and one goes here. Now I'm going to get my mask, my tape, and I'm going to, and I want to stick the, I'm going to put the stick kind of right behind where the, where the ball of your foot is. So put it kind of like that, flip it over, and then tape it down. Okay. Huh? Witness. Witness. Now do the same thing over here. I am put it where like the ball of my foot is. And flip it over. And tape it. Now, you're gonna take your straw, you're gonna cut it in half. Whew. Okay. Now, set those over here. Now you're gonna take your masking tape, and here's what we're going to, or whatever kind of roll of tape you have. And actually you want to put your straw in first. Yeah. And then tape your straw in. Oh wait, no, I did something wrong. Wait, is that right? <laughs> All right, it's gonna move like that as we walk. Okay, and then I'm going to move my thing so that that is up. That one's up and this one's down. Oops. Glue your glue your oops, your straw. Okay. Whew. Now, if you've done it well, which I don't know if mine's very good should be able to walk, let your witness walk around your house. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna pinch my ends closed so that my, my, um, so that my stick doesn't come out right there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So that my stick doesn't come out, where is it? get you stuck in there all right so this is how it should look when you're done now let's go try it out okay so i brought my i am a witness to my front yard and i have a little bit of a ramp here in my front yard so i'm gonna put this down and see how it looks you ready let's see if it works i am a witness i am a witness Woo! <laughs> all right well you can make your witness wheel and you could race two at a time or yeah have some fun with it breaking news before we keep going on this topic of witness we want to ask what do you think the word witness means I've asked a few of our North Fresno Church friends to give me their example and their definition of what is a witness. So when you hear the word witness, what do you think of? Well, when I hear the word witness, I think of someone that saw something happen and told other people. How would you explain the word witness? 
It means witness means to see or experience something. How do you describe the word witness? I describe the word witness like you're wit witnessing something, like looking at something or seeing something happen. Thanks so much for sharing your ideas and your thoughts with us on what is a witness. So remember last week we used this gigantic book to weigh down our art project. It was a great paperweight. Well today we're going to actually use this big dictionary and look up the dictionary definition of the word witness. So let's see what it says. Ooh, W. Witness. One who can give a first-hand account of something seen, heard, or experienced. A witness is someone who sees something or experiences something and then tells people what they have seen or heard or experienced. So as Jesus comes and says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth, we, his disciples and us, get to be a witness as to what we have seen, what we have heard and what we have experienced or present tense, what we are seeing right now in our lives, what we are hearing and what we are experiencing of God right now. We are his witness who gets to share about what God is doing right now and has done for us. That's what being a witness means. So today our story takes place in the book of Acts. We've been talking about being a witness today and what that means. So first we're gonna read a little bit about um, the book of Acts itself. Book of Acts chapter one. So remember we have four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Luke, the third writer, the third gospel writer, actually wrote two books and they're on one big scroll. One book is all about the life of Jesus, which is the book of Luke. And then his second book is about the acts of the Holy Spirit, the acts of the disciples, things that took place in the early days of the church. And that's in the book of Acts, but it's the same author. So Luke writes both Luke and Acts. So we are in kind of volume two, the second story of of this of what Jesus has done in our world. So first was Jesus's life and now it's what happens after Jesus leaves this place, okay? So we are in chapter 1 and it says this. Theophilus, I wrote about Jesus in my earlier book. He's talking to Theophilus. And then he says, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up to heaven. Before Jesus left, he gave orders to the apostles he had chosen. He did this through the Holy Spirit. After his suffering and death, he appeared to them in many ways. He proved that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days. During that time, he spoke about God's kingdom. Now, a few months ago, we celebrated Easter, right? So we had this big celebration. Jesus has risen from the dead. And then he was on earth for how many days? That's right, 40 days appearing to his followers, hanging out with his friends. And now we're coming to the end of his 40 days. So today our story is about Jesus actually leaving earth. And what we need to remember is that he's fully human and fully God as he leaves earth and goes and sits with his father in heaven. So that's what we're talking about today is Jesus leaving. So verse chapter, chapter one, verse four says this. One day Jesus was eating with them. This is before he's left, obviously. And he gave them a command, do not leave Jerusalem. Okay, so I'm going to write the word Jerusalem. Actually, no, I'm going to do this. Jerusalem. He said, do not leave Jerusalem. He said, wait for the gift my father promised. Now, last week we talked about um, Jesus said, I'm going to go to the Father and ask him to send you a helper, send you a comforter, um, a counselor. Remember? Remember who that was? Yes. It was the Holy Spirit. So last week we talked about Jesus saying, I'm going to send you um, the Holy Spirit to be with you so that you are not alone. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. Um, but you will be, I'll be with you through the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is saying, do not leave Jerusalem. 
wait for the gift my father promised. You have heard me talk about it. Remember, remember, go back in your minds. Remember, I've been talking about this special gift my father is going to send you. And we know he's talking about the Holy Spirit, right? And then he says in verse 5, John baptized with water. That's the John the Baptist baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is saying, stay in Jerusalem. And in just a few days, the Holy Spirit's going to come and you're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Pretty cool, huh? And then in verse 6, his apostles met together and said, asked Jesus a question. Lord, he said, are you going to give the kingdom back to Israel now? It's kind of funny. So Jesus, put Jesus up here. He's been with his disciples now for a long time, maybe about three years, people think. We're not too sure, but we think about three years. And they still think that Jesus has come to this earth to get rid of the Roman Empire. Right now, Israel, the people of God, the, the Jews, they live under kind of this oppression. There's these, the Romans rule them and they don't like the Romans ruling them. So their hope is that Jesus, the savior of the world has come to get rid of the Romans. But that's not what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to make a way for you and me and the Jews and the Romans to find a path to God and to be reconciled and know and have our sins forgiven and have this relationship with the living God. But his disciples, even after three years, still think that Jesus is up to bringing down the Romans, which he's not. And Jesus just says, you know, in verse seven, you should not be concerned about times or dates. The father has set them by his own authority. So he's letting us know, don't worry about what's gonna happen in the future. Don't worry about all these things that concern you. Just know that the Father has everything in control. And then we're going to get to verse 8. And this is kind of the theme for our morning together. Jesus says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, you will be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria. And you will be my witnesses from one end of the earth to the other, all the way to the ends of the earth. So Jesus is telling his disciples, wait in Jerusalem, because in just a few days, remember he's on day 40 of his life, he said, just a few more days, the Holy Spirit will come in power. And then with this power of the Spirit, you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the very ends of the earth. So it starts off small in the city that they're staying. And then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger by the power of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about what it means to be a witness. A witness doesn't mean that we're going to all of our cities and, and, and um, yelling at people or telling them that they're wrong, they're living in sin. But instead, as a witness, we get to just share what Jesus has done in our lives. We get to share what we've learned about Jesus as we read the Bible. As witnesses, we share what we have heard, what we have seen, what we've experienced, what we've felt, what we've smelled, all of our senses become engaged and we get to share and be, be God's witness that he is alive. Jesus is alive and his spirit is moving around us and in us. And because of that, we can share what he's done for us, the peace he gives us. And we get to go to a friend and say, hey, you're experiencing hard times or you're, you're worried or you're afraid. Well, let me share with you my story. When I'm worried, when I'm afraid, I close my eyes and I find kind of my center and I say, Jesus, I'm afraid and I'm worried and I'm anxious. Please help me. Remember that prayer from last week? Help! Be with me, Holy Spirit. And the Spirit comes and gives me peace. Pulls me back to my anchor who is Jesus and reminds me that he is with me. And I share that with my friend and they say, really? That sounds really nice. 
yes. Do you want to go eat some blackberries? It's that blackberry thing. I have experienced the blackberries. Let me show you where the blackberries are. That's what being a witness is about. It's about seeing something, experiencing something, hearing something, like all of our friends said earlier, and then sharing what you've experienced. And maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, I haven't really experienced anything. <gasps> it's okay. You can still say, Jesus, give me some experiences. Open my eyes to see the blackberries. Show me how you're at work in my world. Show me what you're doing in my life. What are you up to in my house right now? We're just kind of stuck at home a lot, right? So you have to ask Jesus, what are you doing um, in my family? Let me see you at work. And then let me be your witness to my, to my friends or even to my sister and brother. How are you a witness? And then in verse 9, it ends like this. After Jesus said this, he was taken up to heaven. And they watched until a cloud hid him from their sight. So remember, Jesus is fully human. Like he like has a real body, but yet he is living in a spiritual place right now while we wait for him to return. But remember his promise to us that he won't leave us as orphans? Last week we talked about that. He said, I promise never to leave you. You won't be abandoned as orphans. He's going to send his spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. And next week, we're going to talk about what happens on Pentecost, which was 10 days after Jesus leaves, the Holy Spirit does come. And that is the presence of God that is with you and me today. That's what gives us our peace, what, who speaks to us and gives us thoughts and ideas and wisdom, who guides our, guides our actions. And when we pray for one another, we're praying that the Holy Spirit is moving in us and through us to one another. This is God at work in us. It's the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to leave now, but just wait. The Holy Spirit's coming. So he goes to heaven. He ascends. It's a big word. It means to move up, ascend. He ascends to heaven and is now seated with God the Father in heaven. And now we wait 10 days, and then the next part of the Trinity takes place. The Holy Spirit comes, and we'll talk about that story next week. So today, I want to encourage you to be a witness. Be someone who shares what God has done in your life. And if you don't know what God's done in your life, maybe stop and um, ask God, show me what, what have you done, and, and think about what your life would be like without Jesus. What would your life be like if you, if you hadn't seen the Holy Spirit at work in your life? That's one good place to start. And then thank God for his work in your life. So thank you, Jesus, for, for, for finding me, for knowing my name, for giving me a family who loves me and who teaches me about, about Jesus. And thank God for that. That's a witness. And then when you're sharing with a friend, you could, you, that's, your, that's, what you're, that's your testimony. That's what you're sharing is what you've experienced, what you've seen, what you've heard. All right, let's go ahead and let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you came to earth, that you walked among us as a real live human being, and that you died for us, for our sins. You took all the shame and all the pain in this world, and you bore that on yourself. But it, that didn't hold you down. But that you rose again and then you walked as a brand new creation for 40 days on this earth. We thank you, Jesus, that you, um, you represent new creation, who we're turning into, who we're becoming. We thank you, Jesus, that you passed on the baton to us to say, be a witness and that you give us the, the challenge and the task to share what we have experienced with you and how we read our Bible with others. Lord, I pray that we would be a witness to our, to our uh, families, to our friends, and that you would help us open our eyes to see you at work in our lives. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would be with us this week that you would bring us comfort and you would be near us so that we would know that we are not alone. You have not left us alone, but that you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen.
right. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good week and I'll see you next week.